speak, what's the end result, and that makes it go a lot faster and you're way more productive. Mm. It's almost like cleansing your palate, isn't it? Yeah, it's like getting that. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Like <laughs> taking a um, a drink of water, or having a little sorbet between between courses. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So yeah, um, and it's a great way to just keep your energy up so that you don't feel so drained at the end of the day. Right, and so you you work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs, and I'm sure that mm-hmm. they have some common. I don't want to say faults. I don't want to say shortcomings. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the word I'm searching for? Things that we all do that we could probably be doing differently. Yes. Yeah, so what are some of those yes. and how do you help? Them? Right. So definitely not taking care of themselves. Um, you know, not delegating. So Particularly, I think, as you're starting your business or if you're a solopreneur or even if you have, you know, some team established, it's hard to let go of doing every single thing. Or you get into to the thing where, like, you know, well, I can save, you know, the $100 if I just do it myself, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, one of the things I work with with my clients is, you know, when is it time to bring on team? When is it time to outsource other things? When is it time to stop? and let go of everything that you're doing and look at, you know, even though it's money out and maybe you don't have that in, but coming in, that investment's going to help you bring twice as much in because you're freeing up time to do, you know, the client care, the connections, the marketing, the outreach to bring new people in. Right. Yeah, that's really true. So how do you find people to help you do things? Um, I have a really cool network of people that I've kind of collected over the years. So a lot of times I send out, you know, referrals. Um, but I also have a process of like, who do you want to hire and kind of like figuring out who your ideal market is or your ideal client or customer is, you know, who is your ideal team member. Um, and not only from like, you know, these are the tasks that need to be f- fulfilled, but you know, what characteristics are you looking for? How are they going to mesh into your mission and your values and your core statements? How are they going to be able to contribute to your success and you to theirs? Uh, so how do you find those things out? I just start asking them questions. And then, you know, it depends on who that person is. But um, I had a client I worked with a couple of years ago, and she was really frustrated. She's like, I've got seven people on my direct, you know, direct reports, and she's like, three of them are awesome, and the other four are fine, they do their job, but I don't love working with them, and they're not producing amazing results, and I really want to have a team of, you know, people who I'm having fun with, and that are producing the results that I want, so through asking her a bunch of questions, and she went and kind of started watching her interactions with everybody, she realized that the, the team members that um, that she really, you know, were producing the results that she wanted, they were smiled more, you know, more frequently, they were more positive, they had a slightly different and more open mindset than the other four. Hmm, that's so interesting. So we talked about that and then, yeah, we talked about that and the different strategies she could use to engage the other four to help them develop their mindset. Ah, so that's, so you helped her with that. Yeah. That's brilliant. Okay, yep. that's, a, that's a good idea. So you just gave me your job description in, in depth a little bit. So that's cool. So um, yeah, leadership. So obviously you work with a lot of leaders. And, um, and do they suffer? Or do you consider a, an entrepreneur and a leader the same? Do they... Um, yeah, essentially, because most entrepreneurs are doing something because, you know, they're, they're building their business because they want to have some sort of effect or change with people or the world or something. Right. Um, and they, you know, they see a better way to do it. So, yeah, you know, and, and really we're all leaders, you know, 
you're there's you're you're touching somebody's life, whether you're a parent or a teacher or um, you know even your friends and family. So how you show up in the world, how you're interacting with people, the relationships you can have can make a huge, huge difference. Right. That's that's very true. I never even thought of that. That's true. So if you think of yourself as a leader, you you might rise to the occasion. Yeah. It really changes how you show up. Um, and, again, it was funny because I had – Another client who was, I don't remember where she was at, um, but, oh, she did a talk. She did a talk, and she didn't, um, she didn't get the feedback and some of the outcomes she was looking for, and through, you know, the conversation we had, she realized she wasn't showing up as the owner of her business. She was showing up as the participant in, you know, a room full of people, who, and she happened to be yeah, talking at that moment. So it really shifted how she looks at how she's engaging with the people um, when she is speaking, and she'll get much better feedback and reactions um, and interactions when she steps in as that leader. Hmm, interesting, huh? So what would Mm -hmm. be some things that you would advise her to change to show up as that leader? Um, I think what I gave her to do was to really show up and like prior to that, but practice, you know, not only like really stepping, like take a physical step, but, and have a little mantra about like, I am a leader. I am running the business. Uh I have amazing value to offer. These people need to hear from me because so many um, people and particularly women who are unbelievably talented. Don't think anybody wants, whatever it is they have to offer. And the world needs to hear them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my coaching, I find that as well. It it amazes me sometimes how, uh, how we don't value ourselves near as much as, as even other Mm -hmm. people. We, we oh, just, yeah. Yeah, it's not not good. So self-love, let's talk about that a little bit. And it kind of, oh, we've yeah. kind of already spoken spoken of it, but, um, you know, that, it's so important, isn't it? When, when did you discover how important it was for you to take care of yourself? <laughs> you know, really, um, at the tail end of my divorce, I had... It was like a swirling chaos for six months and just like sort of random but ongoing events. And I knew it was because I wasn't taking care of myself. Um, And things like, you know, I had had like three sinus infections in two Mm. months and was on umpty frat courses of antibiotics because they just wouldn't go away. And then I was prescribed some other medication um, for something else that I was allergic to and ended up in the hospital. I was trying to sell the house and we were mm-hmm. having problems there. My kids were having stuff going on. And I really, um, I would sit in this chair in our living room at the time and all the kids were watching like Sesame street. And we, I would just be like, why am I not like, why am I here? Why isn't somebody coming to save me? Like I was really waiting for Prince Charming to come and like, you know, took me away and make things all beautiful and whatever. And what I realized was that I had to start doing that for me and I had to start taking care of me and eating better and sleeping better, um, you know, and just respecting who I was and owning my value. And the thing that made the biggest impression for me at least, and it may not be for everyone, but I, that was when I realized like I'm leading my kids and I don't want them to have this experience of me being sick all the time and totally stressed out and miserable because that's how I'm modeling life for them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our kids pull us out of a lot of stuff, don't they? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really cool because when you shift, 
a little bit, you don't even have to say anything to them. They'll up level with you as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not an overnight thing. It's something like over a course of a couple of months, you can be like, I'm changing this habit and my kids are doing the same thing with me. Right. That I, as a divorcee myself, I saw that, that change with my children. Um, and it made me feel really good that 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 they mm-hmm. just kind of went with it a lot more than how right. what I did but but we all kind of grew together because of it and it was so important so um when you are trying to talk to somebody about about self love about we, you know as women we we are taught uh not I don't don't think the younger generations are taught this but like our moms for example and Mm -hmm. even a lot of women my age think it's selfish to take care of yourself yes yes it's um it's funny or well it's interesting to me it's not funny um the we're so busy taking care of everybody else that we forget to take care of ourselves Mm -hmm. and that it we shouldn't be a priority and then we're so exhausted I do. I agree with you that uh, the younger generations, I, I believe, are shifting, but it's still there. Yes, you know, it I mean, is. We're nurturers by nature, so you know that's some of it. Is we want to give, and then you get the the mommy instinct kicking in. Like that's huge. But I think one of the things, best things that you can do for your kids or anybody for that matter, is to really focus on taking care of yourself because. That's all we have at the end of the day. It is all we have. And we show up better when we we are taken care of. When we take care yeah. of ourselves, we are much, um, for example, and this is, I think, the, a prime example, is sleep deprivation. If for some reason you're taking care of somebody, like when the children are sick or you have a big project due and you don't get enough sleep, boy, you're, that's bad, <laughs> isn't it? It's, yes. Yeah, you're more likely to get sick. Um, you're more likely to gain weight because your body's looking for energy and you end up having food cravings or you uh, end up overeating. And your productivity level drops. Uh, I don't know what the exact amount is, but a lot. Because you're just not able to think clearly. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you've it's, been there, haven't you? Oh, I have been there. And I love sleeping. And I, that's one of my priorities. Like, I try to get, mm-hmm. you know, seven to eight hours every night. Me too. Yeah. Uh, and and it never and I even, fails. I get sick if I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I even have, most weekends, I try to have, like, one night that I can sleep like nine hours, um, wow. which may sound, you know, unbelievable uh-uh, it to a lot of people, but it's, <laughs> it's just, that's what works for me and it allows me to reset. Right. And especially in the winter because it gets dark so early and stays dark mm-hmm. in the morning. Yeah. It's, we, yes. Mm-hmm. I just pull the cover. My in husband winter, goes to work and I just pull the covers up over my head and go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you know, we don't listen to our biological clocks anymore. Like we're, everything has its, its rhythm, and we are supposed to slow down in the winter and sleep more in the winter. There's a reason why we all feel like we're kind of dragging ourselves around is because we're supposed to be moving more slowly. Mm-hmm. Very similar to bears. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, that 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 drive to hibernate is very strong. I'm not going to deny oh, it. Oh, it is. It is. And it's December, like I don't want to do anything. And <laughs> right. uh, that's how I've planned my my business <laughs> that I'm not like creating a ton of stuff in December because I want to clear things off, get rid of the clutter, enjoy my friends and family. Um Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Lot. When when I was in real estate, there were two months that I didn't do business, and that was in December and in June, because everybody is just too frantic and hectic and yeah. can't focus and sleep-deprived, and 
not taking care of themselves and eating.